scientist Dr. Adrian Owen was one of the first in the country to suspect that some people diagnosed as being in a vegetative state could be aware of their surroundings. I scanned uh, a patient from Addenbrooke's Hospital who was apparently vegetative and we showed her pictures of her family uh, and friends. Um, and we saw activation in an area of the brain that we know responds to faces. And that was the first indication that we had that some of these patients might have some residual abilities that weren't obvious from the outside. When we first saw that this, uh, this patient was actually consciously aware, I was absolutely gobsmacked. What he discovered was that while some patients described as vegetative were unable to express themselves through movement, their brain patterns showed awareness of their surroundings. And he knew that from using an MRI scanner like this one, which can reveal the inner workings of the brain. Okay, if you want to have a seat on the table there. Okay. All right, so just stay nice and still. What we've done here is we've uh, acquired a structural image of Colleen's brain. Um, here you can see a view from the side. Here you can see her nose there, and that's the front of her brain. Um, here's a view from the back. That's the left side of her brain and the right side of her brain. And here's a view from above. And again, you can see both the left and right sides. And what we can do is we can combine those three images into one three-dimensional image that you can see here. This is a, a reconstructed three-dimensional image of Colleen's head and her brain. OK, so we're going to move on to the uh, functional scanning now. OK. OK. When you hear the word tennis, I want you to imagine that you're standing on a tennis court and you're playing a vigorous game of tennis, moving your um, forehand and backhand to return as many balls as you can. And you'll do that for about 30 seconds. We'll go backwards and forwards between relaxing and playing tennis. Is that clear? Yeah, that's clear. Great. Tennis. Yeah, she's imagining playing tennis. Rest. Yeah, so this is my brain as I've never seen it before. It is, yeah. <laughs> so how does asking questions about tennis help patients in a vegetative state? If we ask you to imagine playing tennis at a particular point during the scan, and we see that area of the brain light up that we know is involved in imagining mm -hmm. playing tennis, then we can be sure that you understood what we asked you to do, um, you had memory for what we wanted you to do, and you could turn those, uh, those memories and that understanding into an action. And that must mean that you're consciously aware of what's going on around you. You've seen your brain. Now look at this brain. Now this is a patient who, from the outside, was entirely vegetative, or at least appeared to be vegetative. No responses, no speech. She wouldn't blink if you asked her to blink. But when we asked her to imagine playing tennis, she produced activation in the premotor cortex that was indistinguishable from your own activation. Wow. It shows us that brain imaging can provide something in addition to clinical or, or bedside evaluation. So in this case, it told us that, that a patient that looked vegetative clinically was in fact entirely aware. It's important to stress that uh, this will be a minority of patients. It, it doesn't mean that all vegetative patients are aware, but it does mean that we're now able to detect those that are. I was also told to imagine walking and navigating. Walk. And the reason for that is it causes a completely different area of the brain to light up. It's hoped this might lead to the next big breakthrough, communication with patients believed to have been in a vegetative state. If you were to imagine playing tennis for a yes and imagine walking around your house for a no, that would be a fairly simple way of answering simple yes and no responses. And that's what we're trying to develop right now.